Okay, we did end up missing the unboxing of this. Uh, I haven't played any of them in or cleaned them up. My microphone muted itself. These Sure microphones will automatically mute themselves sometimes. Um, I'm not sure why, but here we have, this is the Plekhanov, the Dennis Plekhanov um, sent us, and here's some of his smaller Drimba and a couple of his larger tuned bits I just knocked over. Got some cool looking, Cool looking instruments here. That's a big harp. That's as long as my hand. We have some of the Drimba pattern. Let's come upstairs. Let's uh, get an unboxing on, get, a, get an ear on these. All right, we're up here. Let's get an ear on these. We're gonna start off with the smaller Drimba pattern. We got some serviceable wood cases. I'd say these are burnt or charred style of finish. We're gonna get some Mighty Mist on here. To cut the oil off. Yes. How long did it take for you to make that? Oh, for me to make that up there? Um, quite a while. I probably have 30 or 40 hours in that. That's all done with permanent markers because permanent marker have a solvent on it. And do you want to show what you're drawing over there? Do you want to show? Here, point. Wait, show what you're drawing. I'm drawing this. Oh, cool. Oh, are you using the solvent and the permanent markers to blend them all together? <laughs> Well, that's cool, yeah. People assume that it's paint. It's actually just a whole bunch of Sharpie permanent markers, multicolored. We're gonna, what I'm doing, do you wanna know what I'm doing here? Right. Oh, I'm taking and sanitizing these off. They come coated in oil, and also you don't want to stick a harp with germies in your mouth, so you can either wash them with soap and water or you can hit them with the Mighty Mist, which is an alcohol-based sanitizer. And then you just spray it on there, wipe it off, People at Mighty Mist uh, were so happy that I mentioned them in a video. They sent me a whole bunch of uh, bottles of this. I got quarts of it. I got refills for little spray bottles. I really like them for unboxings. It saves me a whole bunch of time instead of going all the way upstairs and washing them with soap and water, which if you're at home, your best bet is just to use soap and water, but the Mighty Mist is fast and easy. We're going to start with the smallest Dremba. <laughs> What I'm seeing, I'm seeing good, nice, tight gaps. Pretty decent compression. I'm seeing, this is a very stout frame here. Higher pitched, we'll get out our tuner. And for those of you who are wanting, wondering, I use the TE uh, total en Tonal Energy Tuner in my unboxing, it's just on a smartphone. It's about the best tuner I've found so far. Which is not working right now, let's see here. That is B flat two, which is an A2 sharp. A2, B flat, same thing. Very loud, I'm getting very loud, quite buzzy, not strictly melodic, I'd say. Some melodic properties, but leaning more toward rhythm. Let's see if it plays outward. Decisively better play on the inward stroke. Um, you see that a lot with your recurve triggers. Most of the time a recurve trigger like this is going to play better um, inward than it does outward. Although it was kind of a trippy type of sound when we were playing it outward. Let's play this other one. We have a G2 Sharp, and these are going up. If you're wondering where these are at, these are gonna be on the harpery.com uh, website under Rarities and Unboxings is probably where they'll end up. You can just click the uh, link in the drop-down menu. All of our unboxings now come with a link there. So hit the link and it'll take you right to it. Ooh, well, that's more mid-rangey. C-ish maybe, let's see. I'm seeing good, nice tight gaps. That recurve, almost flat loop, pretty good looking. Uh, wider at the back, we see I have more grinding here. Nice looking harp, the crimps on them, nice looking crimp. Flush, looks like it's pretty much a part of the frame. That's a D flat, so that's a C2 sharp. Mm. 
with a draw strip, with a touch of a draw. About the same inward and outward. A lot of sustain. Yeah, I'd say it has a touch of a draw when it's uh, when it's playing, but whenever it's just sitting static, I'm really not getting a draw. Good instrument. Let's uh, let's get some oil on there. Let's play another one. I'm excited for these big basses. One of these big giant basses is gonna be mine. I had him uh, make me one uh, untuned, and the rest of these should be tuned. Let's see this one. I already have one in this pattern. They're very very pretty. Interesting case, almost like a, that'd be a paracord, maybe. Let's give it a spray of the mist. Oh man, that's pretty. His artwork, the artwork on Plekhanov's are really, really nice. Almost psychedelic alien, old school looking, new school <laughs> outer space. He is about the best descriptor I could have for it. We'll give it one extra spray. Yes. Oh, I see that you wanna I move over. So, oh yes, it is. It's getting bigger. You're doing all sorts of colors there. <laughs> yeah, someday this backdrop will be done. I haven't worked on this in a long time. I used to one, two o'clock in the morning. I used to come under here and uh, or come over here and put on music and do artwork. But now that your your bedroom's right above this, I don't do that late at night anymore. <laughs> Good, nice tight gaps. The oil out of there. There we go. Nice tight gaps. Tall trigger. Now that recurved flat. Ooh, ooh, I like that. Some cool artwork on there. On the front, there's some artistic design as well. Oh, that's an E2. 440 hertz. Long sustain. Mostly, I'd say this one's mostly an inward player. Yes. I'm thirsty. You're thirsty? You want to drink my water? Here you go. Have some water. But yeah, inward, that's a fantastic player. Thank you. Throw this away, we'll get a new paper towel. Just sanitize them off, hitting them with the coconut oil. If you do order any harp through the mail, wash it with soap and water or mighty mist or do something to get the jammies off um, in my earliest unboxing i used to just stick harps in my mouth is that a good idea to uh just stick a jaw harp in your mouth that came in the mail no no <laughs> it's probably not the best idea not all of my ideas my entire life have been good or safe or good practice you know we kind of learn as we go don't we um, yeah. oh you would like more uh more markers now look at all these markers. That's more of the pastel colors. Let's take this one and we'll set it off to the side. <laughs> oh yeah, this leather hat. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got with this one. Now if you had a name for your art there, what would you call it if you had to name it? Here. Oh yeah. This is more of a peach color. I would say that's that's accurate, yes. Oh wait, it has a different cap on it, doesn't it? Did it get switched? That looks yeah. like an orange. I wonder if the orange is the peach now. Yep, orange is the peach. Okay. I'll put the right cap on it. There you go. Yeah. I'm gonna take this off. Uh, give, it a, give it a squeeze and a twist. Oh, right here on the cap. Grab the cap and grab there and squeeze and twist. Did it come off? Yeah. Put the peach on there. There's your peach one. 
That was probably, I think the last time you drew down here, you might have been four or even three. So, as a three-year-old, you might have switched the cap. I remember when you was three, you'd come down here and do artwork with me on the wall, and you'd always um, ha end up with marker bites. Oh, yeah. Remember the marker bite? Give me a marker bite. That would actually be dumb. <laughs> the marker bit you. Mom would come home. She'd, you'd be covered in <laughs> permanent marker, a multicolor permanent marker. Like, yeah, marker bite. Marker bit him. Man, these jars are just... Huge. That's a big bass harp, dude. They are. His, his bass are pretty expensive. But like, I always wanted when I passed on it years ago. And then when uh, Plekhanov returned to uh, Ukraine, he did uh, start uh, building harps again. There for a while, he didn't have... I think he lost pretty much everything due to the war. And then he... He was able to start building harps again. Let's try this one, the blue one. Um, whichever one's the untuned one is the one I'm going to keep. The other one will be going up for sale. That is a big harp. You want to you hold this giant harp? <laughs> That's a big harp. It's kind of heavy. It, it is kind of heavy. A good heft to it. Yeah, a lot of artwork. It's really pretty. One of my friends in Ukraine made this. Mr. Plekhanov. Long... Big, uh, a big embouchure area here. Nice, really tight gaps. Pretty decent compression. A slight flare out at the end. Let's see where we're at tone wise. It'd be 12 cents above an E, E flat. It'd be C D. So a C C one sharp. But it's untuned, so I think this is the one I'm gonna keep. The blue one. Let's see how it plays. This is definitely, this long of a bass is definitely going to be a slower player. Man, the sustain on that. Are you all right? Was you standing on a dumbbell? Yeah, don't stand on the dumbbell. The dumbbell is what weighs down that microphone stand, which we'll be using in the next video to demonstrate the new uh, Johnny Cope uh, harp holders. But yeah, without the dumbbells on there, and I could use sandbags on it, I just didn't want to buy sandbags. Um, I just put dumbbells on there because I have more dumbbells than I do sand. Mm, I like that. That is that is a trippy bass. Good work from... Uh, off. Look at that. That's a lot of artwork he did on there. A lot of grinding. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Let's play the last one. If anybody's interested in these, click the drop down menu for the link for the harpery.com um, so you can access these harps because Porky Miller will be putting them on the website. I do um, most of the videos for the harpery.com, but uh, Porky Miller is the one who manages the website. Let's see this big red one. Look at that. Look at the rolling shutter on it. Got a nice throw. The cat's down here. Yeah, what's the cat's name? Mittens. Mitten sandwich noodles peep poop. <laughs> Jamie, I believe you <laughs> named it uh first time. Yeah, that's what I named it. No, this one's this one's untuned as well. This one's E1. Or E1. Mm. This one's further off of a note than the other one is. I think I'm going to keep this one. But as far away as I can get from Western notes, the better for my meditation. I, I'm not saying you can't meditate with a untuned harp. I'm just saying for my own private practices, I enjoy an untuned harp because there's way more frequencies that fall outside of a note than do fall on a note. However, you know, your untuned harps are better for playing with people in a group because you can do like, like, hey, we're playing in the key of E. Everybody can grab a harp and E1, E2, or E3 if you've got a harp that high and all play together. Or you can play with with uh, with uh songs that are in a certain key. But yeah, for my meditation, I like an untuned instrument. It's really cool. Anyways, we're going to wrap it up with this. I love y'all. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more harp read. Make sure to keep your harps clean, keep them dry, keep them oiled. And most importantly, be good to each other. What do we say? Do we say harp out? Harp out. Harp out.
work out! And most of all, a big thank you to Plekhanov for sending us these instruments. Love y'all. Goodbye!